stop. Still going. Whoa, what about that one? We've got a thriller. and the Eels on Fox Sports. On Rivalry Round Weekend, we come to CUA Stadium for a Western Sydney showdown between the Parramatta Eels and the home side Penrith Panthers, who have been flying high in 2010. They come into this one with an 11-win, 5-loss record. A bit of a hiccup last week, going down narrowly to the Warriors right here. We'll wait and see if they can turn that form around, but they'll need to be on their best form because Parramatta certainly got back in the winner's list in a big way on Monday Night Football against the North Queensland Cowboys. We'll see if they can keep that form going here tonight. Here's their back line with Hayne, Burt, Reddy, Wright, Inu, joined there by the halves, Robson and Mortimer. Both had very good games in that win against the Cowboys. The forward pack, a couple of changes. Chris Keating comes in for injured brother Matthew. And Justin Paul comes off the bench to take the place of Fui Fui Moi Moi, who is back there now with Tim Manor, Justin Horro, and Lee Tamari is the inclusion in the 17 for Parramatta with Matt Keating going out off the side. Jared Hayne, what a game he had, what a couple of weeks he's had at both Origin and NRL level. A sensational try to really set them alight against the Cowboys last Monday. The key for Jared Hayne is quality and not quantity. I thought he was more selective in his work on Monday night. And I was also very impressed with the amount of work he did off the football for other players in this football team. He knew when he had to jump into first receiver, but his support play was good. His talk at the back of the field was excellent. He organised the defensive line for the Parramatta side, and he'll need to continue on that form if the Parramatta side are to win here tonight. A quiet, almost pensive dressing room there for the Eels. The Panthers, not long before they'll hit the field here. Here's their lineup. Lachlan Coote, of course, the try scoring fullback, joined by Gordon Jennings, Pertel, Ty, Graham, and Walsh in the back line tonight. The forward pack looks this way. Pulatua comes into the side. And a change. Sam McKendry going back to the bench. Kingston, Sivanasiva, Waterhouse, Pritchard, and Smith are there. No Luke Lewis tonight. He's out with a shoulder injury. McKendry joined on the bench by Cooper, Bell, and Travis Burns in jumper 20 couple of changes to the interchange for Matthew Elliott and the Penrith Panthers. Michael Jennings has looked much more at home back on the left-hand side of the field as opposed to the right-hand side where he spent most of the season, Laurie. Look, he's a very dangerous player, Michael Jennings, one of the quickest men in the NRL. Hasn't seen a great deal of quality football the last couple of weeks, and there's a lot of questions being asked about this Penrith attacking game at the moment with the majority of their tries coming through kicks, but they do possess match winners and he is one of them I would think that Penrith tonight will be looking to attack down their left side of the field with he and Frank Pritchard and what a dangerous edge that poses tonight for this Parramatta side well there's a very big crowd building up let's go down to our sideline eye tonight for the first time Stewie Raper joins us once again Thanks, Wise. Yeah, it's a, a bit chilly down here, 10 degrees, a little bit of dew on the ground, but it shouldn't affect the performance of these two sides tonight. Now, you've already mentioned Jared Haney got all the raps last week for his three-try performance against the Cowboys. But for me, the unsung heroes, I believe, were the four prop forwards for the Parramatta Earls. Each of those props averaged over 100 metres in their game against the Cowboys last night, and they're going to have to achieve that tonight, probably against the biggest and probably toughest forward pack in the NRL, led by their great inspirational ca captain, the Penrith Panthers, Petro Sivanasiva. Yes, the Parramatta Eels forward pack was very good against the Cowboys last Monday. That is a rare stat that all four front rowers managed to gain in excess of 100 metres, and Tim Manor off the bench in particular. At the back end of the first half, he played an important role in that uh, big half-time lead they built in a hurry. And that's what you want from your bench players, an impact straight away, and Timmy Mena provides that for this Parramatta team. He was given an opportunity in Game 3 of State of Origin. He only played a limited amount of time, but he certainly made a great impact in Parramatta. Leave the sheds. Their co-captains, Hindmarsh and Kalis, would be looking to lead from the front. And that was the platform for the success last year. We all spoke about Jared Hayne, but it was the ability of their forwards to go forward with support play and work and establish a fast play the ball. 
Well, since the origin period began, the Eels have won only two out of seven games played. Coming out tonight, Nathan Kalis leads them onto the field, of course, in his final season in the NRL. His final game right here at CUA Stadium. A big game last week, as Stuart mentioned, 18 tackles, 19 hit-ups, and a lot of metres as well. He's been a wonderful player for the Parramatta Club. You know, captained this club more times than any other player. In fact, he's captained in the NRL longer than any other player. There's a little bit of a question mark about his future at the start of the year and his future in the run-on team for Parramatta, but he's been able to hold down his spot and play some magnificent football as the Panthers hit the field in front of this massive home crowd tonight. Well, we'll wait and see if that uh, lack of points last week, with all the possession they had, was just a hiccup. Luke Walsh will have a lot to say about that. 27 try assists so far this season. He leads that particular category by a long way in the NRL, and he will need to supply some points here tonight. He certainly will. Look, he possesses one of the better attacking, kicking games in the competition, and I'm sure Parramatta, that will be a focus of theirs tonight to put as much pressure as they possibly can on the number seven from Penrith. This shapes as a tremendous battle. Penrith looking to continue their charge towards a minor premiership, and Parramatta looking to make this year's final series still out of the top eight but if they can reproduce the kind of form that they showed us on monday night and penrith can be at their best we are in for one hell of a contest ben cummins and brett Sutter are our referees it's time on here and rivalry round the western sydney showdown between the eels and the panthers and it's kalis who brings it back out on the first carry Beyond the 10 he went, Chris Keating at dummy half, looking for a runner, nobody was there in the end. He went to Jared Hain after double pumping the ball. And now Justin Paul getting a chance to start tonight with Fui Fui Moi Moi coming off the bench for the Eels and Daniel Anderson. It was a big win on Monday night against the Cowboys, but they have put themselves in a big hole this season. They would still need by most people's reckoning, to win five of their last seven games to make the finals, the Eels. And they play just about everybody in the top eight, bar the Dragons, in the run home. It's a tough old road they have in front of them. We'll see how they go first up against the second place team. Here is Michael Gordon. Eight metres on his own side of halfway. Frank Pritchard, look at them come out of the line at him. They'll need to do a job on him tonight on that far side of the field in particular in this first half. Seven receiver tipping it on. Frank Pulatua works at five metres into Eels territory. Walsh now goes to Waterhouse. He runs it up towards Robson, who was very good in that win. One of the unsung heroes in some ways. Hayne got the headlines, but Robson was terrific. A high ball, Lachlan Coote as ever. Flying through for it. Pritchard picked it up. Here's a chance for Penrith. It goes to the left. And the Panthers might have a try inside the first two minutes. Well, it's a massive weapon for Penrith this season, their kicking game. They've scored 71 tries, and 31 of those have been through kicks. And Luke Walsh puts the ball high in the air. And Parramatta are prepared to let Penrith contest the football. They're contesting the football, Penrith, and they come up with the ball. And it was a simple case of Pritchard onto Jennings, onto Ty. Was that knocked back, knocked forward? I think it was okay. But a terrific start from this Penrith team. There was no real urgency from Parramatta to contest the football. And with it being a strength of the Penrith side, I thought they would have placed a lot more pressure on Luke Walsh and placed a lot more importance of contesting the ball. It's not the start that Parramatta were after, it's the start that Penrith were after, and it's a try. The video referee tonight, Russell Smith, spins up the green lights for the home side once again. They score the first try in a game. They've done that now 14 out of 17 games this season. And the Eels have a habit of conceding the first try in a game. That's 12 of 17 for them conceded now in 2010. We'll wait and see if this gets the Panthers going after 
They struggled for points last week in that second half. Daniel Anderson shaking his head, watching on and what Matthew Elliott and his side would have done for those four points in the last 40 last week right here against the Warriors. Yeah, well, they struggled last week, but their first opportunity tonight, they were able to bring some points into this contest. And it's amazing. Penrith scored more tries from kicks than any other team. And the Eels concede more tries from kicks than any other team. And that period there, that situation where the ball was placed in the air, there was no contest. You can see why they're giving up plenty of tries through kicks. 32 tries, in fact, from 72 in total for the Panthers. And that one added to the list. Now Gordon striking them beautifully once again this season. What a kick! from the sideline to get us going. Penrith bolting out of the gates to lead the Eels six points to nil with three minutes gone. What about that for a start, Stuart? Well, it's a great start for the Panthers, but Laurie talked about urgency of the Paramount Earls. What worried me was the urgency of their first set of six. They were a little bit disjointed. They didn't seem to be making too many yards, and they got Penrith, or Penrith got themselves back in a good field position very early in their first set of six. So, their urgency was a great deal, and they're going to have to lift a bit more than what they did then. They get a chance to start again, perhaps, here, albeit with a six-point deficit. Seven receiver bringing it forward. Stopped there by Pine Marsh and Kalis, the two veterans combining to stop. Seven receiver about five inside the 20. Now Pritchard, a couple of good carries already in this game. Kingston, the former Eel, waiting at dummy half. Pulled to it. Works it up beyond the 30. And the fire beginning for the home side in front of this very big crowd. Kingston with jinking run out of dummy half, ramped up by Mortimer. And also Smith. Now he plays it quickly. It'll go to Walsh and we'll just rubber it down towards Hayne. We're trying to play it off the boot. The crowd loved that. The fact the ball got past him. He just pushed the foot down there. There to meet him. Fair reception committee right across the field from the Panthers and they stop him at his own 20. Well, when Penrith are carrying the football, there's certainly some fire in the belly of all the Penrith forwards. They're charging onto the football at the moment. Plenty of intent when they're carrying it and there's plenty of intent in their defensive line. Here's Cooney getting out of dummy half. Oh, running into Pritchard. Graham got to him and made a legs tackle, but Pritchard and the fair bump over the top. Now Kayla spinning. Keeping it alive from Keating, it goes to Smith. Ready, wrapped up by Jennings. Now it could be quite a duel tonight. Ready, a real defensive specialist on that right-hand side, but has plenty of toe himself, but perhaps not quite as much as the man he's marking in Michael Jennings. Kalos will play it back near the halfway line. It'll come to Robson, who puts the kick in, in behind Gordon. Coot, though, is back there. Put a knock to the knee last week, and then before he knew it, he was back up on his feet, grabbing a try for the Panthers. He brings it back out to the 20. He's a wonderful player, Lachlan Coote. Provides plenty of energy for this football team. Just reloads on every play. He supports the forwards. He's their go-to man when they put the ball in the air or along the ground. The Parramatta, the first couple of sets of six, Stewie mentioned it. Doesn't seem to be a lot of intent in what they're doing. Whereas Penrith, on the other hand, are really winding up, playing on the advantage line and gaining momentum already through the middle. Speaking of going through the middle, here they are again. Kingston back across the halfway line into Wheels territory. He plays it for Graham. We go to Walsh again, no bomb this time. He kicks it in behind Chris and Inu. He just floats back, watches the ball go into touch. Well, nothing to do with it. Creston Inu right there, and the Panthers will make the Eels work it away from a scrum feed, 10 out from their own line. There's better effort there from Parramatta to at least get off their line and apply pressure to Luke Walsh. Luke Walsh was up to the task, finding the ground, rolling it over the sideline. Too early on that 10, Petro. Nathan Kalis talking to his players, encouraging them. But a terrific start from this Penrith team. As they form this scrum, people still coming into the stadium right here, and there can't be too many more to come in because they're not too far away, I'd reckon, from a full house tonight. They had in excess of 19,000 here earlier this season when the Panthers took on the Tigers. But 
you'd expect with Penrith in second place. The Eels showing form on Monday night. This was always going to be a big crowd. It certainly has turned out that way tonight. Right playing it. Here's Mateo. Carrying three defenders with him across the 30 metre line for Parramatta. Seven and a half gone. A try already for the Panthers. Justin Paul now trying to get them going out of their own end. Good stop by Kingston and also seven receiver. The first receiver is Mortimer. Turning it back underneath for Ben Smith who continues to play with this troublesome hamstring injury. Saw him come from the field at times last Monday night. He had a bit of a twinge. Once again in the hamstring, but he's out there again tonight, taking his place on the starting side as they bring it back through Michael Gordon. And that was a good kick from Chris Keating, the dummy half. He's got a left foot kicking game, and there's a good tackle from Ben Smith on Adrian Pertil. They really need to mix their kicking game up, try and confuse the back three from Penrith. Hayne possesses a very long kicking game. Mortimer Robson have got short, good attacking kicking games, but Keating out a dummy half with a left foot. He's the key. Good run by Pula Tua. A bit of sting on the first few tackles from the Eels. Trying to stop the Panthers working it up towards the 40 for a kick. Now Jennings doing a bit of jinking, but he will be tackled right there on the red line with the last play coming up. Sloppy play the ball play on. They say Walsh steps back inside Kalis. Chips over the top. Coming through. Coot is there as ever. Fires a long ball for Pertel. Walsh wrapping around the back. Gordon trying to get there. They were hoping and praying the Eels that it was going to go dead. And for the second time in two games, they might have had their pants pulled down. Well, it was great work from Luke Walsh. Parramatta applied pressure, but he stuck back on the inside. He stepped off his right. And then his awareness to place it over the defensive line. They regathered the football and then Pertil kicking it again. And they had it covered. Jonathan Wright and Chris Inu and Gordon. I don't know whether he's grounded the football. I think he makes a play at it. Boy, if he hasn't grounded it, it's the next best thing. He was very confident getting up. He was certainly selling it. I look at this angle again. I don't know. I think that might be benefit of the doubt. I mean, his fingers look to be thereabouts as far as contact with the ball. That one there looks a lot more convincing. That, well, that last angle looks like a try. Well, I would give it benefit of the doubt. One angle looks as though his hands rolled over the football. Another angle looks as though he's grounded it and there's no separation. And that's what we're looking for, separation. It's not control, it's separation. But again, there's just no urgency when there's a kick being put in by the Penrith team. This may give us a better... Oh, that one there, I would say he's missed it. Well, tough one to get a clear look at the hand and the ball there, I think, obscured perhaps by the leg of Kristen Inu. Video referee Russell Smith has seen every angle available. We'll wait and see what he says. I'm going to say benefit of the doubt, and that's exactly what it is. Penrith. Off to a flyer tonight, 10 points to nil. And I think the, the second of the angles we saw was enough for mine to say BOD, if you like. Well, I think you're right. One angle didn't look like a try, and the other one did, so therefore, benefit of the doubt. But Parramatta looking to apply pressure with Walsh off his right, over the top, and then they find some space in behind once again. But they had this covered, Parramatta. It's like the first try. There's no urgency. Because it's a strong part of their game, when they kick, you have to get yourself in a position to contest or dive on the football. I know what they were thinking. Let, let it go, Dad, and we'll get a set of six from the 20-metre zone, from the 20-metre line. But when it's a big part of the opposition, you have to nullify that part of their game. Because they will chase it. They know it works for them. The old double kick again. Now Mickey Gordon 
Tough one for the right footer from this side of the field, but he strikes them so nicely. A shade of odds on to log this one over as well. It's a beautifully again. 12 points to nil it is. The Panthers over the Eels. And they'll need to find some of that Monday night magic once again, Parramatta, to get themselves back into this one, Stu. Well, they do. They're going to need something special. I've got to say, one of the strengths of Matty Elliott's coaching is the confidence he gives his players. And Luke Walsh is one of those players he's given plenty of confidence to, and he's playing with confidence. To have 27 try assists and the closest next to him is Darius Boyd with 15. It's an amazing stat when you consider where he's come from and what he's done. And I think Matty Elliott is, uh, you know, giving him all that confidence and the players around him are, are, are benefiting from that. 68% off possession in the opening 10 minutes to the home side. Here's Sivan Asiva playing at 20 short off the halfway line. Waterhouse looking it down his right-hand side off the field. Kingston goes to Pulitua. Takes it up towards Kalis and Justin Paul with Nathan Hindmarsh patrolling that middle third. As Walsh kicks from his own side of halfway, a good one as well over the head of Luke Burt. Hayen will take it. The chase is a good one once again from the Panthers and Waterhouse coming up to make it a straight line. Stops him five inside his own 20. Well, when you play Penrith, you've got to dominate them through oh! the middle and Luke Burt. Here's a shake. Bit of counter-attack for the Panthers. They're going to call it back here and say there was a knock-on by the Panthers after Luke Burt made the initial mistake. We're just lacking energy at the moment, Parramatta. I know that Penrith have had all the football. And Luke Burt just taking his eyes off the ball. Just having a quick look to see where he's about to run. Dropping the ball forward, placing his team under pressure. Been a sloppy start from Parramatta, but an excellent one from Penrith. Here's Walsh off the back of the scrum win. Another try right here. Boy, it's a massive hole the Eagles would find themselves in. Seven to seven now. Charging out the line and going a long way as well. Only a couple of metres out when he'll play for Kingston. Walsh has numbers to the right-hand side. He gives it to Waterhouse. Little play with Smith going to the outside. Waterhouse coming back to the inside. Now Walsh again to the line. Pula Tua did very well to hang on to that ball. It wasn't a great pass. Would have easily coughed it up. They've used four plays. Here's Graham. He goes to Jennings. Turns it back on the inside there for Pritchard. That's good stuff from Frank the Tank. They go to the short side. Jennings grabbing for himself. Lachlan Coots. He wins the race. And it is all the Panthers here tonight. Another try, another kick for Penrith. And they are blowing Parramatta off the park. Well, it's amazing. You mentioned it. A little kick. And I think Jared Hayne slips over. You can see Jared Hayne there going to change direction, chasing to his right, has to stop, falls over. Hindmarsh does his best, but Lachlan Coote, where is he? Chasing a kick, and that's what he's done all season. Been a terrific opening 13 minutes for this Penrith team. What a season he's having. 17 tries in 17 games now. 21 his career a little bit of extra gym work a bit of extra bulk coming into this new season certainly has served him well he's as strong as he's ever been and an absolute attacking weapon off the back of those kicks from luke walsh mostly the one from jennings well he was odds on to score until he found a bit of traffic but lachlan coot as ever was right there to dive through and put it down 16 nil at the moment, with Michael Gordon 15 in from touch. Chance to make it a three converted try lead. They're going better than a point a minute at the moment, despite Gordon missing a very kickable one for a 
kicker of his standard. 16 points in less than 15 minutes. Do you want to rate it is? Well, that shell shot the Parramatta Hills. Very quiet bench. And don't be surprised if Daniel Anderson goes to that bench early and starts utilising players like Tim Manor and uh, Fui Fui Moi Moi to get their game going again. Boy. You get something to go their way. Michael Gordon misses the kick to make it 18 points to nil, but... They are not in the contest, Parramatta, and that form seems to have evaporated as quickly as it was found against the Cowboys on Monday night. Short turnaround, five days rest only between that win and this game here tonight. The team desperate for wins still with a 7-9 record. Coming into this game, can't afford to be giving up 16 mil starts. It's going to be a big effort for them now. They're capable of doing it. They need to start receiving some football and limit the amount of metres that Penrith are making through the middle. This will help catching the football on the full. They're going to get marched backwards though, Chris. And Edu taking a long way back. Almost all the way back to the 20 metre line at Parramatta's end of the field. He's ready now. And look at the charge in. Pritchard looking for a shot there. Ready was only going up to the line half-hearted. He wore a bit of contact from Frank Pritchard. Now Kalis. They're playing for Keating. Come to the middle call. There's Pritchard again. He's on tonight. You don't always see it. It can be few and far between some of the games where Frank's really at his menacing best, but he is tonight. Now Jonathan Wright bringing it back to the halfway line. Last play here for Parramatta. They need a good kick. And it's Keating who will supply it from dummy half. It'll bounce down towards Lachlan Coote, who picks it up at his own 10 metre line. He brings it back at speed as well. Runs towards Mortimer and also Justin Paul. Well, they've got to improve their support play, Parramatta, in particular when they carry the ball forward. If they go one out, it just makes it so much easier for Penrith with good contact, dominate the play of the ball. When do they want to shift it right? It's off the back of a slow play of the ball, and Penrith are getting the numbers across. Here's Nathan Smith playing it now. Pritchard grabs straight away. And a good tackle there by Hindmarsh. Working from marker with some help. A player to Pertel. He's come a long way from his right centre position for a carry. Especially seeing as it was play number five. Kingston here on the last. We'll give it to Walsh. No chip and chase this time. Down the middle it goes for Hayne. We'll see if he winds up. But it's hard to against this. Good defensive line on the chase, and again they were there, Jennings and Smith. As Frank Pulitura is back on the bike, getting a bit of attention. At the Penrith bench, here's an offload, Keating. They have to provide plenty of that to try and work it away from their own end, but to try and supply some points, most importantly for Parramatta. They have lived and died by the offload again this season. They were good on Monday night. Here's one from Mateo around the back. Right ending up with it coming away from the sideline. They go down the short side. Here's Mateo kicking into the legs of a Panther. Luke Walsh was offside. Trailing back with the play. He made a play out to try and kick it back, but he was always in front of the man who first made contact with the ball. Well, they needed that, Parramatta. They needed something to go their way to stop the momentum flow for this Penrith side. This will be a good test for Penrith now, given that they've had all the possession, all the field position. And Parramatta get a real opportunity now in their first good ball set to apply some pressure. Let's see the mindset of the Penrith team here defending. Keating out of dummy half goes to Robson. Now Mortimer entrenched now in this second receiver role. They have certainly made that much more steadfast situation with Robson at first receiver as he is again here. And Mortimer getting a bit wider. Certainly worked on Monday night. Now an offload, a tip on from Robson. Mortimer with a pickup. Saw a gap and closed very quickly between Waterhouse and McKendry. They're in front of the uprights, 12 metres away. They've used three plays. Out the back, Robson goes to Hayne. He loves to wrap this left hand side, but good defence from Walsh and also Pertel. Robson goes to Kalis. Out the back to Mortimer. A quick ball to Grant. Picked up by Jennings, and away he goes. Forget the Hain train, it's the Jennings Express. And he puts it down under the black dots to make it 20 points.
points to nil. And again, they're ahead of the clock. Michael Jennings picking the football up off a mistake from the Parramatta side who were looking to shift the ball to their right. And just watch this play here. Kalis goes to the line and then passes out the back to Mortimer. And Justin Paul was standing flat. He didn't know it was on. He didn't know what the play was. Or if he did, he didn't run it properly. And the pass just went to ground. And Jennings pushing up in defence, swoops on the ball on the ground and races away to score. Look at that, Justin Paul. He was standing in the pocket of Daniel Mortimer. He wasn't an option runner. He basically got in the road. And Jennings picking the ball up. Not many players will run Michael Jennings down. And again, Penrith scoring. And it's, it's been through. The first three tries have been kicks, which they could have contested. Parramatta, there was a lack of urgency. And then off a mistake, they've scored. Penrith. Just a sloppy start to this game. 20 points to nil becomes 22. Well, they've got a good supply of pens to write down these try scores because we might need a new pen and a pad by the end of the game, Stu. Well, rugby league's a simple game, isn't it? Penrith are showing that tonight. They've completed nine from nine. They've got three choices from kicks, as Laurie said. So they've kicked well and they've contested well. But they've also defended well. The first time they were tested, they forced Paramount an error and come up with a try. So, simple game. Geez, Paramount are going to have to do something exceptional to get out of this. Oh, boy. Well, they have to have very, very large doubts if they could at this stage, even though we've only had or less than 22 minutes because there are 22 points on the board and the locals absolutely loving this lapping it up as mckendry trying to play it too quickly fell to the ground in doing so it will give Parramatta a chance to come back at the penrith defense well he was trying to continue that roll on which their forwards are created tonight it's not as if Parramatta have missed their tackles but they just haven't been effective enough on the ground and if you're not effective on the ground, the opposition will roll forward and get in a position then to put through these attacking kicks. You know, they haven't missed that many tackles, Parramatta, but it's been their ineffectiveness in the tackle, in the contact, which has made it easy for Penrith to roll forward and, and play football under no pressure and just gain that momentum and kick where they want to kick. And we'll see what happens here. They'll play it at the 30 metre line. The Panthers end of the field. Oh, here's Mateo. He might have worn one a little bit high here. He's going to lay there as well. It is going to be timeout. Now we'll give the video referee a chance to take a look at it. We'll wait and see what Russell Smith makes of the contact. He carried the ball forward, Fletty Mateo. Right there, get back on the right there. he carries the football. And, oh, there's some contact there from Nathan Smith. He's down. And they're saying play on. Okay. Russell Smith could have quickly, had he thought it was warranted, jumped in the ear of the referee and said, place that on report and give a penalty to the Eels. But it's play on for the moment. Now there's a penalty. McKendry all over the top there of Moy Moy, who was... Fresh on the paddock. He'll need to cause some carnage tonight to get his side back into the game. Here's Mateo once again. He's shaken off the knock, and he'll play it about 13 away from the Panthers line. It goes to Robson there, set to the right-hand side. Mortimer had to wait for the ball slightly. And Smith is picked off as a result there by Nathan Smith and Pritchard. Now Keating coming down the middle. Tim Manor, who got them going against the Cowboys at the back end of the first half. But Boy, what a different scenario it is here tonight. Now Mortimer, a ball for Hain, they're up on his face. Well, he was stopped, but allowed to pass it in the tackle there of Jennings. Inu again, driven backwards in a tackle. He'll play it about 15 away. Play number five, Mortimer goes to Moimoy, who bounces off the tackle of Nathan Smith initially. 
before Kevin Kingston goes down low to stop him. Here's Keating. Last play. Robson chipping towards Byrne and also Wright. Wright has it. They keep it alive. It goes back to Hindmarsh. Still the last. Mortimer puts the foot down. Goes to Robson. Good tackle. Kevin Kingston against his old team. Snuffs out the attack stone dead. Yeah, great urgency there from the Penrith side. Parramatta looking to go across the field. A lot of sideways movement. But now with Fui Fui and Tim Menner on, I think they'd be better served to play more direct, straight up, and get Jared Hayne more involved through the middle. Par uh, Penrith, sorry. Scramble defence, excellent. They're up for this contest. I think they would have been stung with their performance last week. A lot of people expected them to win. They had plenty of possession against the Warriors inside their 20 metre zone. They failed to score points. And sometimes a performance like that gets you out of your comfort zone and puts you under pressure. And when you're under pressure, you can play your better, your best football and show a little bit more intent in thing, you know, how you go about things. And that's how they approach this first 25 minutes of this game. Certainly have responded tonight so far, Walsh. Well, I guess if you're a believer that I need to show you that they can score tries in the fashion other than through a kick you might still have your question marks but I think the Panthers fans will take a 22 nil score line every time no matter how they get them Lee Tamari is out there as Hindmarsh takes it up towards the 40 meter line here's Keating he goes to the right hand side Mortimer Moy Moy running with decoy Hain going to the line giving a lovely ball for Reddy who puts a kick in Inu won't get there. Ready chasing his own kick. It'll be too big. It was early in the tackle count. They still had players up their sleeve. And as it turns out, the Panthers will catch their breath and begin once again from their own 20, but encouraging signs at least for Parramatta. Yeah, trying to go down the edges, Parramatta. Jared Hayne heavily involved. We've already had his time over again. I think he would have held on to that. You know, giving the ball away, mid-tackle count. It has to be perfect if you're kicking the football. And now Parramatta give away a penalty in front of the referee and Penrith will go on the attack straight away. Well, there's no doubt about this one. The fast play of the ball had Tim Manor struggling. And he made the play on Kingston as a result. Find the line. Come on the attack once again. Well, that's the difference. They're getting between defenders and getting up quicker. Penrith at this stage. And Par Parramatta need to be more effective with their first up contact and wrestle and slow them down, take them to the ground, give them time to set and push forward. The Panthers are a far more organised team than the one we saw last Sunday. Here's another yeah, sloppy play the ball. Get up and play the ball. By Sam McKendry, who gets a bit of a rev up from the referee. He'd be disappointed with that, Sam. That's two errors in his game now. It's quite easy, Sam. Just, just take your time and do it. The referee even giving him some advice. Yeah, that's just sloppy. I mean, it was a big set of six. Tim Manor was all smiles and gave Sam a bit of what for as well. Sam might reply in spades if uh, he gets a chance in this next set of six because Manor will put his hand up and carry it, no doubt about that. But they scored a try right there, the Panthers. Just about game, set, and match. Well, let's see what Parramatta can show us in this set of six. They're trying to play down the edges quite a bit, Parramatta. Penrith are playing a compressed defensive line. They probably feel as though they can see that space on the edge. And Jared Hayne, that's where he's lining up, out wide. He's not around to play the ball. Off the back of a manor run, he was stopped by McKendry as well. Here's Mortimer going to the first man, Ben Smith. Hayne was wrapping around the back. The second row will play it at the halfway line. Here's Moy Moy. Hasn't been as effective. In 2010, no doubt about that. That is moments, but in recent times, it hasn't been the damaging line-breaking front row. He was a marvellous run to the grand final last season. Here's the catch by Michael Gordon, bringing it back out beyond the Panthers' 20, and really they've had to 
defend a couple of sets inside their own 20, but there's been very little pressure on the Panthers at this end of the field, and their completion rate is good, 11 of 13 as we approach the half-hour mark. Well, the structure for Parramatta is strange because they're not playing every play out to the best of its ability. They're actually waiting for a set-up play. And you can tell with you know, Jared Hayne just not being involved in the first couple, not pushing up in support. Just drifting to an edge straight away. It's like they're going three plays, then we'll go for the big play. If nothing comes from that, we'll go to our kick. They're a better football team than that, Parramatta. And they're more effective when they play each play to the best of their ability and push up in support and react. Here's Luke Burke bringing it back, but Lachlan Coote was up there against a weaving winger. He was able to hit him and stick with him as well to make a good tackle. Half an hour gone, 22 unanswered points to the Panthers. Here's Hindmarsh. Kingston was there. He threw a heap of work tonight. Some good runs from dummy half and some strong defence in the middle of the field as well. Hain now gets the first receiver. Inu with a fend on Nathan Smith. And he almost got to the outside there of Wade Graham, who had his hands full. Back on the attack they go. Here's Hain again. He goes out the back to Robson. Bit of a missed time on the play with Horro. A chance for Jonathan Wright. And that just about sums up everything so far tonight from Parramatta, doesn't it? Wright going to the outside. Burt cutting back to the inside. And it's a wonder Daniel Anderson hasn't fallen off the back of his chair. No, but that was a little bit better from Parramatta, given that they were all around pushing for the football. And there was plenty of bodies in motion, but unfortunately, communication breakdown there between Wright and Burt. I think Wright wanted Burt to hold his width. Burt wanted to come back on the inside. No communication. And all of a sudden, turnover of possession, and Penrith get the football from the scrum. And they haven't really been threatened tonight. A couple of times they've had to defend a, a set of six inside their own 20 metre zone but other than that they've certainly dominated this contest and the chance of Parramatta coming up perhaps again right here if they can hang on to it right has it after Waterhouse put it down and they'll play it at the halfway line here's Horror taking it for a settler from dummy half he runs towards Walsh but also Pertell the good carries is what they need next Moy Moy it is, trying to supply one of them. Manor is thereabouts, going a bit wider as they work it down. Eventually, Moy Moy will get back to his feet and play it. Slow old play the ball. It's tough against the set Panthers defensive line tonight already. Robson going to Manor, who was a couple wide of the play the ball. Now it goes back to Keating from dummy half. He gives it off to Ben Smith. There are plenty of black jumpers all around him. He'll play it back inside the Penrith 20. Two tackles left in this set of six for Mortimer. Here is Hayne showing it going flat to Moimo who brushed past Walsh. He beat Coote. He beats everybody. And it's Philly, Philly who gets the Eels going here this evening. They needed something. And the big man delivered. Didn't get a great pass also from Hayne. Simple ball put down there by Trent Waterhouse. And watch the hands of Moy Moy to come up with this pass in the first place. Behind him, down low as well. But he caught it, got past the halfback, then beat the fullback. And momentum did the rest. Well, it's a great play from Parramatta. And don't go riding this Parramatta team off. Just isolating Luke Walsh. Jared Hayne and Fui Fui combining. And really, it was just Fui lining himself up on the halfback and charging onto the ball just through determination and that's what they need more of the plays will happen off the back of just charging getting in between defenders it won't be from set plays and going two up or three up and, and putting on your big play it'll be from this type of play just pushing forward with a man carrying the football hitting holes getting between defenders getting up quickly play the ball react off the back of that you know, it's a big scoreline, 22 points to six, but I'm not prepared to write Parramatta off at this stage. Well, it was at this point on Monday night against the Cowboys, 
They hit the turbo boost button and put on three tries in six minutes to rack up a big halftime lead. We'll wait and see what they can do right here, but look at Moy Moy carry it now. Good run by him. And he'll play it back towards the 30. They'll go wide to Hayne. First man play for Justin Horro getting through. What a ball and what a pickup for Wright, who will play it at the halfway line. Terrific hands. Now Hindmarsh goes to Mortimer. Not much doing in the right-hand side, so he took the tackle. Things beginning to stick, perhaps here for the Blue and Golds. Here's Hayne again, going to the outside right, into a huge gap. He draws and passes. No, he doesn't. He fooled everybody. And Parramatta go back to back. And Jared Hayne warming to the task. A pass for Moy Moy to score. A pass for Wright to score. And just players in motion hitting holes. And Penrith are vulnerable when you do that. And defensively, when Parramatta apply pressure like that, that's when they look good. And they've just gone back to back. And Penrith have been sloppy with the way that they've defended, in particular on the edges. And it's when Parramatta just play what's in front of them, not worrying about setting up for a play, just playing that play to the best of its ability, push into holes, push into space, react off the dummy half and react off the ball player, provide them options. And there are some chances out here for Parramatta. Now Luke Burt keeps the points coming. 22 points to 12 back to back. They scored two tries in two minutes. We've got a game here, Stuart. Well, we do. And Laurie talked about how Parramatta were trying to hit the fringes of first 20 minutes they didn't have a lot of football but when they were going the fridges they were running what we call overs towards the sideline the last two tries have come from direct straight running running on of good passes and if they can continue that they're going to post more points they look shaky Penrith defensively they look more shaky than Parramatta defensively Boy, and I know that's hard given that they're in front by 22 points to 12. this game is taken a very big mood swing hasn't it now they still lead by 10 but Parramatta suddenly they look like the team that put the Cowboys at the back end of the first half of the sword here's Hayne a step and they are getting their noses through tackles here now Robson from dummy half gives it to Horro who supplied that incredible pass in the lead up to the try for Jonathan Wright now Robson to Manor Searching for a gap. Nothing doing right there. He'll play at five on his own side of halfway. This will be the last. Keating will kick. Just a steadying kick. They could have put it through the hands and tried to pull off something special, but a good common sense play by the hooker from just inside his own side of halfway. Now a ball comes loose. And they're going to say it was lost in the tackle by Lachlan Coots. And now a bit of lip as well. And Parramatta will have it from just outside the Panthers 20, and Petro would like a word. Well, they're just winning the battle of the ground at the moment. Parramatta, they're rolling through, they've got the possession, and here they come again. Two minutes to go before half time. And Parramatta, there's more urgency in their running, and they're getting between defenders, and Fui Fui just charging at the line. Boy, Adrian Pertell had his hands full right there. Here's Keating. Robson now. Oh, ball which went to Manor. It could have only just been flat or backwards. In fact, it's been ruled forward. It looked forward. I don't know what quite happened there with Jeff Robson. But he slips. Boy. Talk about the air escaping from the room. Because they had superheated it here in the last five minutes, Parramatta, and he knows what a let off that is. Oh, he certainly does, Jeff Robson. Oh, just slipping. Oh, I don't know how you could say that was forward, though. Right Out of the hands backwards, it may have floated forward. That's a harsh call. That's a harsh call. May have been one of those optical illusions. To the sideline official, the player going sideways. And 
the man with the ball who ends up with the ball ending up in front of him and the Panthers breathing a massive sigh of relief as we go downstairs the steward right for a moment to get the feeling of both these sides as they leave the field at half time but Parramatta back within 10 here's Kingston seven receiver now brings it back up towards the halfway line it's a good kick right here and they can go back and regroup here's Walsh supplying it down to Kristen Inu we'll wait and see what he does he fires a long ball a 25 meter perhaps 30 meter pass for Jared Hayne who gets to the outside of Pertel it goes to Jonathan Wright they set upon him and then Haynes passed it a little bit better for Wright there were some meters to be had he'll play it for Robson Here's Horro. The siren sounds, and that'll do us for a quite remarkable first half of rugby league. Four tries, four unanswered tries for the Panthers as they build a 22 point lead. But the Eels have hit back. We've got a good one coming up. Let's go downstairs to Stewart. What well, we do 10 minutes before half time, Daniel Anderson would have had a different script to what he's going to do in half time now. They're playing enthusiastic, the Eels. They're back in this game. And if they can continue that, I think they could probably get over the Panthers. Big second half coming up right here in rivalry round this Western Sydney derby. The Eels back in it. We'll take a break and come back to look at the many highlights of the first half in just a moment on Super Saturday. Penrith boy we saw plenty of this in the first 40 minutes Panthers running up four tries in the space of the opening 20 minutes Michael Jennings nobody was going to catch him and he took an intercept and ran 80 meters don't forget about Monday night football this week the famous Leichhardt Oval should be jam-packed once again as the Tigers who are in the top four at the moment take on the North Queensland Cowboys a bit of history between these two sides of course going back to the 2005 grand final in particular in rivalry round this round 19 in the nrl pre-game show from 6 p.m kickoff seven o'clock of course if you can't get there join us on fox sports 2 or fox sports 2 hd the panthers come back out we saw the pictures before the break laurie showing a rather animated matthew Elliott, concerned coach so we go downstairs for our Halftime chat in a moment from Stuart Raper to get a report from both dressing rooms, of course. Luke Walsh coming back out if you're interested in a wager in the second half here. At the moment, the Panthers, $1.28 favourites, leading by 10. The Eels, 3 50 The line, 12 and a half. A dollar 85 each of two. One triple three nine zero. You can bet live, of course. Bet now on TAB Sportsbet. Luke Burt has the ball placed. He made an error, which proved to be a costly one. Inside the Parramatta 20, they scored off the back of it, Penrith. Through Lachlan Coote, a third of three tries from kicks in their first half. But it was Parramatta who were on top everywhere by the scoreboard in the final five to six minutes of that opening period. We'll see if they can keep it going. Burt with the kickoff. A deep one will go down. He'll be caught by Lachlan Good. He'll give it to Sivana Siva. And the period in which Petro Sivana Siva is off the field in this second half could prove to be a vital period in the context of the outcome of this game. I think the next 15 minutes is vital in the, next co uh, in the context of this game. One team needs to grab the ascendancy. And if Parramatta could grab first points in this second half, we will have a game on our hands. It's there, it's up for grabs, this contest. Only 10 points separating Penrith and Parramatta at this stage. And Penrith looking to challenge for the minor premiership and Parramatta playing for their finals appearance in 2010. Walsh's kick from halfway. Payne coming across will keep it in play. Good confidence sign from the fullback and the Eels as they 
work it away on their first possession inside their own 20. And here's Jonathan Wright who scored that terrific try. Well, it's to... the two rapid fire ones to get themselves back into the game as Kristen Inu works it up towards the 20. Sorry, Warren. In the back half of that first 40 minutes, Parramatta from inside their own half were looking to shift the football. And that's a sign of growing confidence in this football team. Could have been quite easy for them to go into their shell. I suppose when they were chasing points and they were getting momentum through the middle, it made their job easier to be able to shift the football. But you'd like to see it continuing on in the second half. Now Hayne, who has a huge boot, will kick it down the middle of the field to be taken by Lachlan Coots. He brings it back to be wrapped up at the 40 metre line at his own end of the field. Boy, there was a good catch under pressure there from Tim Manor, who got a little tip on from Fui Fui Moi Moi in the previous set of six. And they could have easily coughed it up at their own end. Instead, the Panthers work it away across the halfway line now through Gavin Cooper. And we'll play it. Five into Parramatta territory. Here's Walsh. Bell going sideways and coming up out of the line. Ben Smith once again a couple of times tonight has tried to make a statement in defence. Now Silver Receiver out the back for Walsh. Good flat ball for Waterhouse. Strong defence though from the Eels. There's a tackle made by Horro and also Robson. Last play from outside the Eels 30. Walsh to the air. Some pressure here on Hayne and Inu. Hayne though coming up with the catch and he was back on the turf by the time the contact came from Lachlan Coote. Let's go downstairs to Stuart Raper. Well as you saw on the footage uh, Matty Elliott was not happy at all. He said we've let this side back in the game by a poor ball control so he wants a better completion rate especially coming in the back end of the game. Daniel Anderson he was pretty calm. He wanted the Paramount Earls to put a lot more pressure on the kick and also on and getting the reception of the football. Obviously, Pat, Penrith got three tries from kicks, so wants a little bit more of that. And obviously, to hit the fringes again and try and identify the Pat Penrith weaknesses on the fringe. See if they can catch them out wide as they did at the back end of the first half. Here is Keating going while he was working for it. He had Kingston not square at marker. He was certainly banking on it. Now another back jam penalty. Another 10 metres, they get marched, and Hayne taps it quickly. They're all offside. There's going to be another penalty. And the Panthers will do very well here. Not to end up with somebody in the same minute if they keep considering penalties. I'm not talking. Keep going. I'll talk to you later. It was great work there by Jared Hayne. It was off the back of a good run from Thuy Thuy Moi Moi. Keating was able to get out of dummy half, find the markers, not being square, and Parramatta. Here they come through Thuy once again. Good run. He takes it up to Gavin Cooper, who will make him play. 15 away from the Panthers line. Manor now. Good body angle once again as he hit the line. Stopped by Kingston and company. They go left. Mortimer to Robson. Charging hard was Justin Horro. What a tackle. Trent Waterhouse one-on-one. -on -one, and he pulled him down cold. Now Robson gives it to Mortimer. Hyde Marshall work it forward for a settler. Just so they can set themselves once again out to the left-hand side they go. Here's Hayne stepping. Beating a couple. Giving it off to Jonathan Wright. Showing it. Going himself. Looking for a gap. A great start in the second half from Parramatta. And he's confident, Jonathan Wright. He just slices through, rolls the football over the line, and that is a four-pointer. They needed to be next to score and first to score in the second half, and they have done that. That's OK. You're going to give the Michael Gordon try in the first half, this one. That's a try. Certainly is a try. That's a try. And again, it's just through intent and purpose when they're running the football. Horro through the hole. Poked his nose through. Quick play the ball. And away for the prize, Parramatta. And Jonathan Wright, limited time in the top grade. But every time he plays, 
He shows there's plenty of potential there. And Jared Hayne stepping off the left, going to the ground. No, I won't surrender with it. I'll find Jonathan Wright in between a couple of Penrith defenders who were slow to react. And just his strength and his size and his footwork. He just eluded the defenders, sliced through Petro and puts it over the line and Parramatta are back and back in a big way. It was a good put down in the end, wasn't it, by Wright who had to really extend that arm and keep control of the ball. May have only been a finger on it, but it was enough for downward pressure. And now from just about right in front, Burtz converts to make this a four-point game. Well, the signs are there, Warren. If Parramatta are prepared to run hard and cop a few bruises and use their speed and their agility, it is opening up for them. Like Penrith are conceding more yardage now, and they're starting to look really shaky. And any footwork and any speed and go forward is starting from the likes of Fui Fui and Tim Menna. And it's a different football team. Well, here's Moy Moy. And what a role he's played. We were saying he hadn't been at his best or up to the standard he set last season for most of this season. But he's having a big one here tonight. And Tim Manor again has played his role as well off the bench for Daniel Anderson. Every game when you're in the Eagles situation, of vital importance. And I think despite their 11 and 5 record and their second placing on the table at the moment, I think the next half an hour in this game, in the context of Penrith's season, is huge. Here's Burt going down the sideline. They're going to say forward pass. Oh no. Oh no. They were off for the Vickies once again. What's his favourite play? Jared Hayne down a short side. The ball drifts forward, but I don't know, out of the hands. Oh, no. Out of the hands, that's perfect. It drifted forward. Oh, it was a great short side play, and playing down short sides in a limited space, it's hard. It's a hard because ball players feel cramped, and it's got to be a perfect pass. And I thought that was perfect from Jared Hayne. And that's a sloppy pass from Penrith. And all the momentum at the moment is with the blue and gold. Oh, well, they may have had the lead if that play is allowed to continue on. Instead, Penrith is trying to regroup right here. I'll finish the thought. Half an hour remaining and just over right here. Given what happened last week where they struggled to score points and then they get a 22-0 advantage to begin this game. Paramount almost handed to them on a platter. And suddenly, if they go on to lose this game, there will be massive question marks about their reckoning as far as the top four is concerned. Go on. Walsh, they have a bit to say about that right here. He puts one in the air. Hayne can't come up with it. Hindmarsh has to scoop it dead, but there was a Penrith hand in there. And they will bring it back out into the field of play for Parramatta to begin their set of six. Well, again, this is the way they look most likely to score. Penrith is the ball in the air. So if you're Parramatta, you need to make sure that you're dominating field position and where you give the football back to this Penrith side. If you allow them an opportunity to be kicking 30 metres out from your try line, you're in some trouble. But if you can take that out of Penrith's game, you know, they're handling the other part of their defence quite easily. Here's Moy Moy to play it. Not, a, not been exactly facing the opposition goal line when he did as Ben Smith works it up towards the halfway line. Last play for Parramatta. And it goes to Hayne who puts it high in the air. A spiral kick as well. Difficult one for Michael Gordon who did very well to come up with it. And as ever, he puts the foot down straight away and brings it back within 10 of the halfway line. Luke Walsh flipping it up from dummy half. Now the ball comes loose, it'll just be lost. No strip from Parramatta, they say. 
If the Panthers' handling was very good in the first half, boy, it's let them down so far in this second half. There's no work in there, mate. Well, Petro's not happy in the second half. A couple of decisions has gone against Penrith. He was just fighting to get up to play the ball, Lachlan Coop. I've got no issue with it. I think you have to have control of the football. May have been a little bit of help from Ben Smith. We'll never know his play on. As Joel Reddy taking the ground heavily there in the tackle by Michael Jennings. Hindmarsh, they're up looking for him. Wade Graham is there. Hindmarsh stays alive with it. So does Ben Smith. He comes back to Keating. He gives it off to Mortimer, who steps past the front line to be stopped 40 metres away. Here's Robson going for home. Back on the inside for Horro, who put it down. They looked very lightly once again, didn't they, the Eels? He likes his chances on that side of the field. Jared Hayne going up against Luke Walsh. And they're starting to ball watch Jared Hayne. He's got runners back on the inside. He's got men coming short. And of course he can go himself and do what he did to the Cowboys on Monday night. Seven a Seaver. He's played the opening 11 and a half minutes of this second half. He Plays it for Kingston. Luke Walsh has come from the field. Perhaps a bit of a limp as he did as well. Travis Burns is out there. You'd imagine Wade Graham now just slipping the ball away for Matthew Bell will take over the halfback duties. Last play here for the Panthers. Kingston appealing for a penalty. Graham puts it up. He was knocked over in the process. It looked like a clean and legal hit. The referees rule it to be that way and a nice catch by Kirsten Inu gives Parramatta possession. Gee, that was good work from Ben Smith. That was a sacrifice for his team. You have to put pressure on the kickers. And he did that and allowed Inu to go up for the football. And he came down with it. And now with Luke Walsh off the field, the number one kicker for Penrith becomes Wade Graham. That's great work. Is Hayne playing the ball and he was going to. Graham knew there was a fast play. The ball coming up and swung into ground. And off the kick for line, the Eels are going to come at them with the lead in their sights. And this game suddenly deserving of the full house it has. They are right into this. Plenty of Parramatta fans here, as you'd expect in this Western Sydney derby. Moy Moy playing it inside the 30. Keating. He goes to Chaos. Out the back they go. An attack. A spread straight away. Horro back on the angle. Stopped there by Kingston. And also Nathan Smith just outside the 20. Keating giving it to Chaos. Working it forward. Spinning in the tackle there of Nathan Smith. They take him to ground. They're set either side. Hayne to the right hand side of first receiver. It goes his way. He goes to the line, kicks for Kristen Inu! He picks it up and puts it down as casually as you like. And we are locked up at Penrith. Kristen Inu. How relaxed was he chasing that football? Did he give up on that? Did he give up on that? I think he just had to pace himself to make sure he wasn't going to stumble. Touch in goal. <laughs> Look at that. That is as cool as you will ever see. Players would race expecting that ball to go over the sideline. <laughs> that is unbelievable. That's remarkable. And Jared Hayne, another try assist off the back of a penalty. I'm still shaking my head at the lack of urgency from Kristen Inu. He put the big ones in early, and then he just, oh, no, this will bounce up for me. Boy, the most casual put down of a big try in a team season that you'll ever see. Oh, I thought he was called offside. <laughs> it looked like he'd stopped. And I'm going to tell you what, I wish I hadn't punched you as he put the ball down because I, I think I've done my AC again. Oh, boy. I'm never going skiing again.
Here's Bird, a couple of metres in from the touchline. 22 plays, 22. This is some sort of game on Super Saturday. Bird for the lead, hits it, swinging back. It's there. There's nothing wrong with your TV sets. It was 22 points to nil to the Panthers. Now it's 24, 22 to Parramatta, Stewart. Well, unbelievable turnaround. And to make things work for the Panthers, Luke Walsh has come from the field with a cork thigh. He did cop a knock in the first half. You see there he's strained again, kicking that football. Now he's on the bike now. There may be a chance they might utilise him. And the way they're going, I think they might want to get him on the field again. Well, Fooey Fooey Moy Moy slowly back to his feet right here. There's going to be some time out. Craig Catterick, one of the veteran trainers in the NRL scene, very quickly out there. We'll take a look at it and see what happened exactly here. Perhaps just into the shoulder there of Gavin Cooper. I just think it was a good hit. Yeah, we're going to be playing on this. Then, Fui, I'll call the whip by the whistle again, then you can play the ball. Hey, Push Gavin, up for him, Gavin, just give him an upper room. All right, you need to brace him. yourself when Fui's carrying it off the kickoff, though, yeah, don't no, you? Penrith, You've got to be Penrith. prepared to drive him no, with his shoulders. Okay. They did that, Penrith. They've got to stop this momentum. The way you stop momentum is through your defence, ripping him with your shoulders, being effective. And that's a sloppy play. The ball there from Nathan Kalis. They were lucky to get away with that. Well, and all the Panthers to a man blew up and said, please, we've had so many go against us. That has to be a mistake by the Eels, and it was. And Penrith will get the scrum feed. Moy Moy, well, what a 16 minutes in this second half. He's played off the back of what he did in the first half. It had to be a mistake in the play of the ball. I thought for a second they were going to get away with it. But Penrith... They still have to show composure and control when they've got the football and not rush their plays. Let's see whether they can get through this without their regular number seven in Luke Walsh. He's not a noted ball player, Travis Byrne. A lot more responsibility on the shoulders, you would think, of Wade Graham. Here is Waterhouse in an awkward position for a moment there, 20 metres out from the Eels line. Can they regain the lead? Having coughed it up, 22 points, no less. Cooper to play it for Kingston. He'll go to Bell. Now Graham playing the halfback role. Paul Ball. Coop only just came up with it, did very well in the end. The key possession here for Penrith. Now Kingston showing it from dummy half. Going off, falling awkwardly. Losing the ball as play on for the moment. There has to be some sort of concern for Kevin Kingston, the way he went down and lost the ball in the process. Jared Hayne has it for Parramatta. There is Kingston. Boy, he's tough. Back in the line. He, he was bent over like a pretzel oh. for a moment there. I had shocking thoughts then. I thought something seriously had happened to Kevin Kingston. But he's back in the line now. His team needs him. And Justin Horror been excellent as well off the bench for Parramatta they get great value off their interchange players Parramatta what a rookie season it's been for Justin Horro he's been a find off the bench for Parramatta now home over the head here of Coote gets some backspin as well he can do it all again suddenly got away from the outstretched hand of Luke Burt and then coming back makes a good run to return it all the way to the Penrith 20 they got a great result off the kick. And now the Panthers forwards need to muscle up and work it away from inside their own territory. And they're going to will help them out. And they're going to do it without Petro. Petro's just left the field. Matty Elliott's decided to give him a rest before one last hurrah. And the forwards, they need to gain some momentum through the middle. And Gavin Cooper plays on the advantage line. He's well held though by Parramatta. He's dominated in the tackle. It'll go away to Burns to put the kick in. Horro had a chance to put his shot on him, but pulled out of it. And now Hayden gives it off to the most relaxed man in the NRL. Ew, he wasn't too relaxed. 
Maximus is being booked back towards his own in goal area. Then he got a ball away to Bird, who gave it on to Jonathan Wright. Well, how good is it? <laughs> Parramatta, are they back? The signs are there that they're back. The confidence to offload the football in that situation, not many players would take that risk. That's what makes Parramatta such a great football team when they're playing this way. Here is Kalis taking it to the halfway line. And beyond when he plays it, Keating now goes to Hindmarsh. He goes to Robson. Here's Horro. Good stop by Travis Burns. Who tackles above his weight, has done so since coming into the NRL. There's Fui Fui Moi Moi getting a bit of chiropractic work. The kick from Keating will stay in play and then find touch a metre out from the corner post. Excellent kick from Chris Keating down the short side. Left foot kick. The winger stayed up. And Lachlan Coote, he was further in field. He was thinking Jared Hayne kick. I need to be aware of where Jared Hayne is. And Keating read it beautifully down a short side. No pressure. And Penrith now have to work the football 90 metres down the field. Been a remarkable performance by Parramatta. Being down 22 okay, points. Nice and now Jared. leading by two. Okay, Well, off the back of the scrum win, Penrith have it. And it's Michael Gordon who takes it forward. And there's a very big Panthers crowd suddenly a little bit quieter than they were, certainly. And they're on their feet and screaming at 22 points to nil in the first half. Now Matthew Bell. Kingston going wide for Burns. He goes across. Nathan Smith beating it out there still playing a terrific game at dummy half now Waterhouse back to the halfway line last play here for Penrith and need a good kick and they'd love to force another mistake from the Eels the kick might be too big though a bit of backspin it'll sit down and Haynes under pressure he gets away from Jennings though to bring it back into the field of play great return from the fullback he was always going to beat two defenders there, Jared Hayne. Oh, Kristen Inu, a one-handed take. Oh, he's heart attack material. Imagine being the coach. Oh. Here's Keating taking it forward. Stopped there by Kingston and also Graham. Mortimer from dummy half, feeding it on for Ben Smith. And they've used up four plays. They're only just beyond the 20. Paul, a little shift. He goes from Robson to Hindmarsh. Away to Horro. He's in trouble. Wrapped up there by Pertell. This will be the last. A long way inside their own territory. And Hindmarsh ended up with it. Right was tackled. Boy. They needed a cool head right there. And Nathan Kalis complaining to the referee saying, I'm sure that one of the Eels was taken out of the play. Gavin Cooper has been held from the field with a leg injury. Penrith behind on the scoreboard have their woes injury-wise suddenly. Well, I thought that was six to go. I thought Penrith had made a play at the football and Luke Burt pounced on it and it was six to go. I think that's what Kalis was blowing up about. Well, they must have ruled that while it touched a Panther, it wasn't played at. There's the kick. Hard to determine exactly whether it was played at right there, but the referee certainly didn't think so. A ball from Pritchard to Jennings. Here's a chance. Brad Ty for the corner. Inside Hain. Stopped by Reddy. Half a metre out from the line. The Panthers searching for the lead. It goes to Graham. And Parramatta could pay for not getting a good kick away in the back end of that previous set. Jennings now loses the ball and Parramatta come back up with it. Well, that's a play that didn't need to be made from Michael Jennings. Once again, relying on a kick to try and break this Parramatta team up. He needs to trust his ability there, Michael Jennings. When he's got the football, if you're defending him, you're really scared. You're really worried about his pace. He's just got to trust himself, Michael Jennings, when he gets that football in a one-on-one -on -one situation to try and beat his opponent.
But that was good. Scramble from Parramatta. Great urgency. They're hanging in. Jared Hayne now. Big boot down the other end of the field. It's a huge kick. Lachlan Coop picks it up and suddenly this crowd back at full volume. It feels like it's week two of the finals. Has arrived early. Parrot 24. The Penny Panthers 22. Pertel takes it back beyond the 30. Still 15 minutes remaining in this one. Now Pritchard, short ball, well held by Nathan Smith. It had to be a good catch under pressure, and it was. Kevin Kingston comes from the field, chains number eight for the Panthers. He's ready. They go to ground pretty heavily there. He had a forearm raised as well towards the chin of Travis Burns. Now Perth's uh, rather pull it to her. He's 42 metres away. Last tackle. And Penrith will go to Walsh, who is back out there. He puts up a kick. Not much pressure on Jared Haney. Takes it comfortably. Steps one. Steps two. Steps three. He's away. Jared Hayne with a catch and a run. They're not going to catch him. All aboard. Tickets, please, for the Hayne train. Have you ever seen anything like it? Well, I'm standing and I'm applauding because Jared Hayne you are a star the kick the composure to take it and it's a big play from the Panthers given they're so successful they were coming through but they weren't there on time and there was four defenders five and then when he finds open space it's put down the glasses, baby. The Hain train is back. And Parramatta, through the brilliance of Jared Hain, may well go on and win this game. But the momentum that they gained from Monday night, well, it didn't carry on in the first 20 minutes of this contest. But since their first try, it has all been one-way traffic, and it's been through this man, Jared Hayne. First, it was with his ability, with his selection of pass. Finding people and putting them into space. And from that piece of magic was just brilliant. Just his running game, the swerve, the speed, the agility. Wow. He is some sort of sight, isn't he, at full flight? Michael Gordon, who was a speedster, couldn't pick him up. From right in front, Luke Burt adds the extra two. They're dancing now. They were just about to burn their jumpers at 22 points to nil. Now they lead by a 13 remaining, and it's a new ground record for CUA Stadium at 22,000. 582. I didn't think they, they could get that many back in here. Well, I don't know whether they could have fitted any more people in here because there's not a spare seat in the joint. What a game they've seen. The Parramatta fans who made the trip up the M4 will talk about this for a long time to come. They looked as though they might have been back on Monday night against the Cowboys. And you were changing your philosophies, your theories. At 22 points to nil, but here they are. 30 unanswered points later. And they lead by eight. And the, the run towards the finals at least continues for the moment until Nathan Hindmarsh coughs that up. Puts his team under pressure as Petro Subinaceva Prepares to come back onto the field for Penrith. Live by the sword, die by the sword. Oh, Parramatta, guys, Nathan Kalis oh, carrying the oh, ball oh, forward, oh, trying oh, to oh, offload. A pass that didn't need to be made, but they were pushing there in support. Their support play is picked up, their energy is picked up, and their intent to run and make uh, gain momentum through the middle has improved. They've run to break holes. They haven't tried to finesse their way around this Penrith team. They've been prepared to take some bruises and go forward and play every play.
not set up for plays. And that's when Parramatta are at their best. Here's Pula Tua. Penrith searching for a try to get themselves back into the game. Seems remarkable after the 22-0 lead. You could even say that, but that's exactly where they are. Nathan Smith, 10 metres away. They struggled under pressure last week to come up with a try. We'll wait and see what they do here. Pritchard, he's also there, probing, searching. Good tackle by Mortimer and Smith. Play number five in this set. It goes to Walsh. Out the back for Waterhouse. They've got some numbers. A chance for Penrith. Well read, though, by Luke Birds. He saw the long ball coming and came up to shut it down, making the tackle there on Pertell. Walsh juggles it. Last play, a kick across the uprights. Jennings goes up for it. Everybody missed it. Not Wayne Graham, though. He makes the play. We are going to check it. Well, it's been the only way that they've looked likely to score points against Parramatta. And that's through their kicking game. And Luke Walsh putting it up. They're all on side. And I think they want to check to see whether there is any interference on Parramatta's players. And I just think he failed to come up with a football. Kristen Inu. Wade Graham puts it down. I don't think there's any obstruction. It's just a matter of whether, well, I think Lachlan Coote certainly gets a hand on the ball. Did it go forwards or backwards from there? I think you'd have to say benefit of the doubt. Well, we'll see here. Lachlan Coote. Watch his left hand once again. And his right hand, perhaps. I'm sure he makes contact with the ball. It looks that way from both angles. You'd have to say, well, this angle here will give us a pretty good view at it. Backwards. You'd say backwards. I'd say play on. And another try off a kick for the Panthers. Or will it be another try? We're assuming up here it will be. Russell Smith, what does he think? He better put up green lights. He might not make it out of here alive. He says try. And we have an absorbing 10 minutes of action coming up right here at CUA Stadium, live on Fox Sports. The Panthers back in it, trailing by four, with Michael Gordon about to try and convert from 10 metres to the left-hand side of the post. Kristen Inu climbing above the pack, but unfortunately failing to grab the football, and it bounced perfectly for Wade Graham. And what a final 10 minutes we have in store for everyone watching. And Parramatta off the back of that error from Nathan Kalis. Made to pay. Gordon missed a kickable one. In the first half, makes no mistake that miss at the moment is the difference in the game. Parramatta 30. Penrith 28, you'd pay double or triple to see this, Stu. Well, you would, it's one of the games of the year, and you, you've got to feel for Lee Tamari. He's watched this game from the bench and the bike many times, and he still hasn't got on the field. So hopefully uh, Daniel Anderson might put him on the last five minutes or so. He might be ready for the Tour de France, but I doubt he's going to get a run at this stage unless there's an injury. And you'll be going with the men you know, the men who have got you to this point. We'll wait and see. Luke Bird, with eight and a half remaining, gets his back underway. The kickoff will sit up for Pritchard. They're up there in his face, and they'll stop him at the 20 metre line. Oh, might have almost come loose there. They were appealing the Panthers for a hand in the play of the ball and a stripping penalty. But it's play on. Here's Brad Ty. He grabbed the first try of the night all the way back in the second minute. Pula Tua, met by Kalis, Hind Marsh is there, so is Justin Paul, who started the game for the Eels. Now Walsh, back underneath is Waterhouse, running at Chris Keating, who put his body on the line with some help from Ben Smith. Fast play, the ball, Keating left on the ground, as Burns goes from dummy half, and they're back 
42 away from the Parramatta line on the last. Here's Graham. He goes to Walsh. He runs to the outside, puts it in the air once again. It's Hayne there to take it once more. This time, though, Lachlan Coop wraps him up. 15 out from his own line. What they would have given to be able to have done that about five minutes ago. Well, if you're not going to get there on time and contest, you need to make sure that you've got a wall of defenders in front of Jared Hayne. That pass looks suspect. Well, well on the wrong end of a, a dubious call when they looked likely to score earlier in the first half, but they got away with one there. Maybe things have just evened themselves up, but it didn't look as though Rearson in who threw a, a forward pass by some stretch to Joel Reddy. Now Kalis. He's back within eight of the halfway line. He'll play it for Keating. Haynes kick from outside the 40-metre line. We go down the throat of Lachlan Coote at his own 10. He brings it back to run towards Keating. And he'll play it there, 28 out from his own line. And now your discipline needs to be strong. You can ill afford to give away cheap penalties now, either side. And what team now starts to think about the result rather than the process? Pritchard! He's almost through the walls. Five on his own side of halfway. There's a collision. Justin Paul knocked to the ground. And Penrith will get a penalty. Penrith have got one fight back left in them. Pritchard, a strong run, gained the penalty. Coop now finds touch. Parramatta, they will have to defend here. If it comes down to last tackle, they've got to provide some pressure on the kickers. Listen to the noise this crowd is making. Pull it to a 15 out midfield. They go to the right hand side. Walsh hangs on to it. Too long perhaps for Waterhouse. They put it down with plenty of tackles up their sleeve and Parramatta have it through Daniel Mortimer. Boy, they like that moment over again. Walsh in the double pump it. It just caused Waterhouse perhaps to second guess when the ball was going to come. Mortimer dragged back towards his own in goal area. That'll be the first. Here's Keating giving it to Hindmarsh. It'll be simple stuff, you'd imagine, from the Eels to work it away from their own end and then Do you think Haynes so? Booth. Do you think so? Oh, they wouldn't spread it, surely. Right, yeah. Yeah. But here's Mateo, and anything could happen when he's got the ball. He could have got an offload away. He had it poised for an offload. Good run by the lock forward. Keating. Do they know how to play that way? I think it suits them. Here's Manor. Pula to a left on the ground. Keating kicking from dummy half for the sideline, and he won't find it. Coop picks it up, steps away from Keating's chase. Ragged by Robson. Four and a half remaining. The Panthers down by two. And Here's Penrith, Michael Gordon. Have they got a shift of the football in them from inside their own half? Or are they just going to run it from dummy half? No, Frankie Pritchard, Jennings, that's the side now to tie. Comes away from the sideline, wrapped up there by Reddy and also Imu. Here's Burns. He goes back to Graham. Seven receiver is back out there for the finale. Will it be a crescendo for Penrith? Now Graham to the line. Ball for Pritchard. A crash ball, all or nothing play, and he couldn't come up with it. The pass had to be perfect. In that situation, the defence was sweating on him and the pass was just behind him. Well, they've jammed in all night. They have jammed in all night. And you just saw where Michael Jennings was. He was too close to the ball player. And he really wasn't a, an option out the back for Frankie Pritchard. And that made it so much easier for Joel Reddy to jam in. Because if the ball didn't go to Frank Pritchard, he could move away from Pritchard and go to Michael Jennings. Jennings needed to be further away with a little bit of width and depth from Wade Graham. The Eels across the 40-metre line. Mateo again. Wrapped up there by Waterhouse. 
Just over three minutes remaining. They take it forward through Tim Manor. He has had 13 carries. He's made 16 tackles as well. Chris Keating goes a long way from dummy half before he's eventually wrapped up there by Luke Walsh and also Frank Pritchard. Two plays left. It goes to Robson. Hindmarsh. Not much doing there. He'll just bump it forward. And they might just hoist it as high as they can. Haynes at first receiver. Here he is. He puts it up and says, boys, get under that one. Reddy is there, so is Inu. Reddy makes the play at it. Couldn't come up with it. Jennings does. Runs away from Mortimer. And he's tackled by Robson. Well, now you need your big guns from Penrith to get involved. Frank Pritchard, Michael Jennings, Lachlan Coote. There was a chance for Coote and Pritchard, but Coote was tackled. Now there'll be a penalty. They might have milked it nicely through Travis Burns. He fell over the top of Chris Keating, who is injured. He's struggling to get back in this defensive line as the Panthers come at them for perhaps one final shot. They've coughed it up in their last two chances at this end of the field. What can they produce right here? Frank Pulatul will play it 40 metres away. Burns at dummy half. He goes to Nathan Smith. Can the Eels hang on? After scoring 30 straight points at one stage. Walsh for Graham. He takes them on. There's no way through. Stop there. And a tackle by Mortimer. And also to Mari, who is out there at the death. Pulatua bumps it forward again. 15 metres away. Play number five. It goes from Walsh. Back to Coop. Another kick. Another try, perhaps. Cleaned up by Inu, who saves the day for Parramatta. Oh, again, just the calmness that he possesses. Kristen Inu. I think everyone else around him is concerned. But I don't think he is. He knows he's got it covered. Penrith relied on their kick. And I think it's an area they have to improve. They need to find more ways to score points with the big games coming up at the end of the year. The Parramatta still here, 15 metres out from their own line. This will be play number five. Lee Tamari. And his third club in the NRL will play it on the last. Just over 20 seconds remaining. They'll go to the sideline, take it out of play. And the Panthers will have to form the scrum, stay in the scrum, and stop the clock with just under 10 seconds remaining. They stop it at 79.54. Six seconds remaining here at Penrith. One play. There's definitely time out. Okay, wait there, get in, get A couple of seconds ticked time by. Out, now it's in. time back on. Out. What have they got? Walsh, as the siren sounds, goes to Jennings. He goes to the left, comes back to the right. The forward pack have a chance to do something. Here's Smith. He gives it to Pritchard. He's caught. He fires it out the back to Matteo. Matteo for the line. Pops it up. What a turning point in Parramatta's season. Coming here tonight, the question mark still remained over them. Were they a genuine force in this competition? After tonight's performance, I say yes. Started off slowly, but this is no ordinary football team they're playing against, Penrith. They are running second in this competition for a reason. And Parramatta to give up 22 points to come back and win this game of football is a remarkable effort and a real turning point in their season. And Penrith chants their arm. And Mateo 
came up with the football. He pushed away from Gordon and Pertil. And Justin Horro, who I might say, has been outstanding for Parramatta tonight. And the confidence that they will gain out of this and the momentum which it will carry for them in the coming weeks will be unbelievable. It's as good a win as you ever want to be a part of. It's their eighth of the season. Their record now, eight wins, nine losses, getting closer all the time. Bird's kick away to the left-hand side, but it won't matter. And they have pulled off one of the more remarkable comebacks you'll ever see. It's four points off the biggest ever comeback. Down 22 points to nil. The Eels have beaten the Panthers 34 to 28.